Kao što smo pomenuli na početku današnjeg skupa, korisnici danas od operatora očekuju prenos podataka bez prekida i zagušenja u svakoj situaciji i na svakom mestu. Međutim, svega toga nema bez sistema za nazor mreža i usluga i mogućnosti da operatori iz nepreglednog okeana raznih signala, događaja i logova izvuku ono što može da im ukaže na neki problem ili prostor za unapređenje. Zato su potrebne platforme koje mogu da se uhvate u koštac sa ogromnim količinama podataka, ali i ljudi koji imaju znanja da se sa takvim izazovima uhvate u koštac. Na tu temu prvo ćemo čuti od Nine Hjorth Bargisen iz firme Kentik. Nina se internet mrežama bavi već duže od dve decenije. Dugo godina je radila u Danskom telekom i kablovskom operateru Tele Denmark Communications, gde se bavila dizajnom prvih rešenja za hosting i streaming video sadržaja. Gotovo sedam godina radila je za Netflix na uspostavljanju infrastrukture, zahvaljujući koje filmove i serije možemo da gledamo bez zasnikivanja. I hvala joj na tome. Odnedavno je u Kentiku firmi koja poslije godine briljira sa rešenjima u domenu nadzora kompleksnih mreža i servisa. Ms. Bargesson, please tell us about Kentik's approach to network observability. You have the floor. Can you hear us and see us loud and clear? I can hear you and I can see you. And, okay, uh, great. Thank you very much. For and vice versa. Okay, the floor is yours. Enjoy. Thank you very much. And hello, everybody. And thank you for letting me come here and speak. And uh, I hope you can all see, uh, see my screen as well. I'm interestingly going to pick up uh, from where... Um, from where uh, Repka was just talking before the break. Um, and I'm not sure I completely agree with him that the conditions he were talking about, how our network has changed, is going to mean the death of the peering coordinator. But I guess that will be a discussion over a beer sometime whenever we can meet again in person, uh, Aranko and I. Um, but thank you for letting me do this talk uh, remotely. Um, I am going to talk about exactly what is network observability, but first let me talk a little bit about Kentik. Kentik is, we call it the network observability company, and we have over, over 300 uh, customers. We can monitor and do provide observability for any network, every country. And when we do ask our customers, we have more than a 95% uh, customer satisfaction and independent measurements have shown that they do experience over 25% more uh, increased uptime. And we, our system do, does ingest trillions of records every single day into the uh, clouds where our service is hosted. Um, and a little bit about me, I heard, and I think there was a little bit of a presentation, but I'm going to repeat it. Today, I'm the director of go-to-market strategy for service providers for Kentik. And before that, I have helped building the internet over the past couple of decades, first at uh, TDC in Denmark, and then since at Netflix and a little time at Subspace as well. In my spare time, I'm a passionate sailor. But you can also learn more about what I've done throughout my career um, and a number of other way more interesting people uh, that my CEO, Avi, is uh, interviewing in a podcast series called Network AF. I will let yourself decide what you put into AF. Please go and have a look. You can listen to Doug Mattery as well and a couple of other very, very interesting people. But back to... Uh, what we were here to talk about, which is modern networks and what are we running. And as Remco was talking about earlier, it is not our ne your network anymore. Like back in the day, uh, when I started working with the internet uh, and the IP network, we were just care we cared mostly about our own network. But today, almost everyone, even the large uh, carrier networks down to the small enterprises, are dependent on, on, uh, on services that are running on other people's infrastructure, on the cloud services, on the DNS all over the place. Uh, our, our internal systems are now running in the cloud. Um, so it is where we, we can say that it is no longer our network that we are operating or running. And what does that mean for us? Well. It means that when something breaks, it is even harder than it was before. And it was always a big question. Is it the network or is it something else that happens when some, something is breaking? Um, it is even more difficult to, uh, to answer today. So 
what 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 has that what does that mean then well we can learn from what other systems are doing and in in large um automated systems and in particular in the cloud they're now talking about uh, observability and what does that mean well it's an if when you have a large complex system it is looking at a system looking at the behaviors and understanding what is happening inside the system based on what is coming out of the system. But this is very difficult in a traditional observability way to do for networks because there are so many IP addresses, there are so many events, there are so many different paths and maps and, and all the complexity that all of us know that we're working with every day when we're operating our networks. But we can do it, we just need the right platforms to do it and the right, and the right approach. So I can take what we believe is that when we talk about network observability, we basically translate it into, well, it's the ability to answer any question about your network. Um, where will we be at capacity? Is this an attack? Is there a problem in the network or is it the application? And why is there so much latency over here? It wasn't there before. Uh, what should I test? Not only what is happening with this test, but also what should I test to make sure that I know what I'm doing? Um, and then finally also, what will it cost? What does it cost to run my network? Do I know that? That is all part of what you want to put into your observability. It's all parts of answering any question of on your network. So we've come up with, we think there are six requirements or six basic elements that we have to look at. So we have to see all networks. We have to correlate all the traffic and the performance. We have to add context any context into the measurements we have, any context from other systems, from whatever else we know. And from that, we will get insights. And with insights, we mean something that will tell us what is going on and what to look further for, but not necessarily something that we predefine, but something that the system can learn from the data. And again, come back to ask any question. And then finally, use all of this information and all of these automated um, insights that we're getting to automate away all the boring and the routine tasks so they can focus our energies on the difficult stuff. So what does um, good network observability look like? Well, all of them and different way to, to look at it. Here are all the networks. And when we talk about all the networks, we do mean the core network, the edge of the sites, the cloud that we're using, the, the LAN connections we have throughout the, the, the network, uh, what's going on on the internet, also part of our network. And finally, the containers you have inside of your cloud. And what are we collecting the data? Well, it's flow data, it's VPC logs, it's streaming telemetry, it's host data, it's DNS data, it's SNMT, it's tests that you set up, it's DNS logs, everything, everything that goes on on your network. And finally, the context we've been talking about, if we go into that is more of the geolocation, where are the IP addresses located? What is the routing information we have looking into your BTP table? Which apps are running? Um, which DNS? What are the threats, um, patterns that we know about? And finally, who are our customers and what do we know about them? And what do we need to know about them when we're looking at our network and our network performance? So we pour all of that into a system and then out we come with the things where we can get the answers to any question we wanna ask. The insights will pop up automatically on, on dashboards and alerts. And then we finally have the ability to curate into all of this data. The data is there, other stuff will help us, which uh, questions do we wanna ask? And then ask the question and drill into the answers and get more and more information. And finally, what then? Once we have the answer, what, need, what do we need to do? 
And we believe that a good network uh, observability system will also provide you with output so you can automate or easily go and perform whatever the data tells you that it needs to be done now. So automate and help automate the workflows or at least make them easier. Uh, so you don't have to copy and paste data or uh, think about whether you want to go over here or go over here, which one is the most important, the system should be able to help you uh, decide that. So I'm just going to go run through, I don't have a lot of more time, uh, run through a couple of uh, examples of what we believe. So when we talk about seeing all networks, here is a, a presentation where we can, or a a slide where we can see that we can see the cloud networks that is used and the base, uh, the, the core network of the customer and um, routes and pathways. And then in the ability in the same picture, you're able to drill down and get a little bit more information about those networks. Um, and you have it all on one screen and then you can drill down and go over where you wanna go. Another example of correlating uh, the data is that here we have performance, uh, we have uh, a combined picture where we have some synthetic tests, which is we're testing um, a flow, we're testing a service running in AWS, but we are also at the same time able to look at uh, how much traffic is going there and the system will be able to also tell you which test would be useful to uh, to go and do. The third example is the context. So we all understand flow. Everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have now get for years and years and years gathered your flow data. So you know which traffic volume is going where and you can see where it's running, but you need to add additional context for it to be super useful. Like this customer is using uh, customer data and is able to go and see, are there any of my customers who are behaving in a uh, suspicious way? These guys are financial guys, so they need to make, make, make sure that, that they were doing, that they know what their customers are doing very well. And here they're able to add that context into the system and get the alerts and insights uh, based on that. And here is from our own little home. Um, once we log into our system, the first things that we get is a is a insights into do we have any unusual traffic running anywhere on any of our links, and that's right there. And it will tell us if it's not good, and we can always see what's going on in the network um, on the predefined uh, dashboard. And finally, uh, in the query, well, the requirement number five was uh, the um, the curing the curing ability of drilling down. You can see you know, curing into what is this traffic coming from this ASN, and then you get more data and you can zoom in and zoom out. And the important thing about a system like this is that you have the data available all the time. So you don't have to predefine your questions and think about, well, I think tomorrow I might wanna know this. You don't know. So you have to be able to answer any question at all times in your network, going a bit back in time, uh, but definitely not wait for something to show up tomorrow when you wanna know about it today. Um, and again, here again, a little bit more about all the filters and queries and dimensions and how you can slice and dice the data that are in the database. And finally, uh, getting the output. Here is a, an example from uh, our DDoS detection area of the network, where you can see down in the corner, you can easily go to the next step. What do you wanna do with the information that you know that right now you can see uh, that this destination IP is being flooded? How do you go about to mitigate it? Or how do you go about to drill down and find out whether it is something you want to mitigate? Um, so what we see when we, when we do that, and this is uh, based on an independent uh, customer survey from Tech Validate. Um, again, as I mentioned, we have 20% more uptime and people get done 
things done faster because you can automate away the routine tasks. And again, better uptime and faster done, uh, your things done faster always um, gives you some good savings. So that was it for me. Do I have ability to take questions? Uh, you have ability, Nina, but we don't have any questions for you. It seems everything was clear. Okay, so if they, but, that... but please, please uh, stay uh, closely watching our live chat. If there are any after, after this, please respond. Okay. I will absolutely, and I want to say thank you. And if anybody have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, uh, and also join our community on Slack. Uh, if you're interested in what uh, uh, Kentic can do and how everything is working. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much for letting me speak today. Okay. Thank you very much. Stay safe.